traffic and I'm running wires for the new zone system I'm putting in. And I bet the first wire run down here, I'm about to go off into the, uh, the great unknown out there. And go ahead and get the second wire in. But here's a look at the first one I ran just a few minutes ago. Goes right down beside that plumbing vent. Drilled a hole down, kind of plotted it out compared to a grill. It's over here. Plotted it out so I could find it in the wall. Fished it down, cut a little square, uh, in which I'll get a plate to cover up. I made the square liberal <laughs> in size. That's our first zone. I gotta figure out where the zone panel's gonna go. Then I'll go ahead and run the second one. So I'm up in the attic and it's 9.23 and we just put the baby to bed and my wife is like, you're gonna wake up the baby because I was hammering in the thermostat staples. So I've decided to do the taping method. So I'm just gonna tape it to the return duct because uh, I think that's classy too. So I'm gonna put the zone panel right here. I have the one zone we ran from way back in the back coming down that duct. Have the other one coming from right there. And then our other thermostat wire is running back across, but it also goes down that duct so I can probably get some extra if I want to. Mount the zone panel like right here somewhere, like build like a wooden face or something like that. We'll make it look nice because we can actually get this thing running without having the SBD bypass in yet because of the low airflow we run. I don't think we, we may not even need the bypass. We're gonna use it anyway, so we can kind of demonstrate how it works. But uh, our airflow is so low right now. We'll see, that might change when we get our zone system working. But uh, that's the general layout, what we're gonna do. And uh, just stay tuned. We are back here up in the attic and I have the zone panel just to kinda, this is it, the EWSC zone panel. And I'm gonna take these knockouts out right back here and probably drill holes in this so I could channel the wires through it. This is our little piece I built yesterday. So I'm just gonna put it in right here, screw it down, and then I'll be able to uh, mount the panel like just like this so it's easy access and everything. That's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna be working on putting, taking these ducts off and putting on the actual dampers. So we're gonna kind of go through that. I'll, I'll do one of them with you guys and then the other two I'll do off camera and then we'll come back after we're done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this panduit strap off that's on here. Got tape all the way around here. What I'll probably do is just cut it off with scissors or I have a razor blade. Go around and cut it off. Be easier. I have to redo all this stuff anyway. Or just this connection, so it doesn't matter. I might have to add some insulation if I can't pull it up far enough with the existing flex jacket. But if you pull up the existing flex jacket, sometimes you get in trouble because what'll happen is it'll bunch up the helix on the inside. Kind of bunch this up a little bit to get it out of the way. What we're left with is there's a manual damper on the inside. We'll take that out. Actually, we can leave those in if we want to or take it out, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can adjust the zone damper to have a stop in it, I believe, we'll check it out. And by stop, I mean the damper can only open or close a certain amount and then there's a physical uh, barrier in the way that won't let it go any farther. So let's cut this off. This is our other panduit. Duck tie, whatever you want to call it. I always call them panduit straps. And something different about me, I've never or I hardly have ever used a panduit gun. The tool that tensions these tight, I've never really used it. I always use this gun right here. All right, with this, we can do the same thing. Take the tape off or I can just zip around it. Doesn't really matter. Nice and cool this morning. That's why I'm up here. Although, we've been doing some work while it was not so cool. In fact, this whole job was installed when it was definitely not so cool. I think it was July of last year. Pretty hot and all by myself. There we 
you go. So the duct is disconnected. The next step is we need to get the zone damper and put it on here and we can screw it in. So I'll put the duct out of the way. All right, this is our tin right here. 10 inch URD, our damper itself, damper blade, damper blade with gasket. On top you have the actuator motor and we'll have three connections there, power open, power closed, and common, which you'll be able to see on the end there. That's power open, power closed, and common. And I do believe these right here, you see the little metal pieces on either side, one here and one tucked away. You can see it right here on the edge. Those are the stops that you can adjust. So let's go ahead and put this on. It'll face upward. And I should have brought the crimpers because it looks like it's gonna be kind of a, a non-fit here. Crimp it a little bit to get it on there better. I knew I should have brought those things and I didn't. The crimpers are back. I've had Weiss crimpers for such a long time. It was Malco before that, but I've always used Weiss. Or Wiss, however you say it. I found that a lot of these pipes like this, they don't always uh, have a good crimp on them. Especially when you're going from two different brands of fittings, like whatever brand this takeoff is, I'm not quite sure. Over to the zone damper. Sometimes they're not quite the same as if it would have been the same brand making both. Like a glove, all right. So, with this, you see if we open the manual damper, it's really, in fact, it's going to hit the other damper. It's gonna hit the damper on the inside because you can see the manual damper sticking out right here. It's gonna hit it on the inside. So we're gonna to need to remove that. We can remove it or we can cut it. You can actually cut the blades down the side. Here, let's take a closer look and I'll explain that. So we have this manual damper here and it sticks out so far it will hit the zone damper as the motor turns the actual blade. So we can either take it out, which is probably what I'm gonna do, or cut it here. So it still can block a decent volume of air if you need it to, but it won't impede that zone damper. So basically when you turn it out straight like this or perpendicular with the collar face, it won't impose on the damper and you'll have to do it to both sides too. Cause if you turn it all the way around, you don't want it to hit by accident that way. <laughs> all right, but I'm gonna take it out. So you can take the screw out on top. Our wing nut here, wing nut. There's a handle and there's a washer. So you have these three pieces that go into that. And then just kind of bend the blade to the side on the inside. Take it out. One side of the blade typically has a screw type connection where you screw that stuff in. Sometimes both sides do. And this time actually looks like, uh, looks like it's got some threads on it, but uh, not really a screw inside. So we can, we can save that for later, actually. I'm a saver, guys. I save stuff. I'm going to use the old skill impact driver. It is not as good as the other ones that I have, but I like to use all the tools. Even if it's not as good, I'll put them into action sometimes. You guys probably do that same thing. You have a tool you like to rotate through just for the heck of it. That's what the skill is, because the Roby's definitely more powerful. My wife bought all these containers at like TJ Maxx or Dollar Tree or something like that. So if I need to take a few screws up, I'll just put them in there. I like it. For some reason, uh, I'm just blown away by containers. I don't know why they excite me, but different containers. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard when I say it out loud, but hey, it's just the way it is. We're gonna put three screws in it. We wanna make the damper motor accessible. So this time, just sticking it right up in the air is gonna be perfect anyway. There we go, one screw in it and I can let it go. Make sure, sometimes it moves the air handler around a little bit there, looks like. Two more screws at least. 
If you have a 360 degree circle, you put them every 120 degrees or so. If you put them at 110 degrees, you get a bad YouTube comment. Looks like 110 degrees, man. I don't know how you sleep at night. Something like that. One time I pulled a vacuum down to 643 microns. I just want you guys to know that, that's all. So, okay, we got it screwed in. Next, we tape it up. There's gonna be holes where the damper fit through. Go ahead and tape those up as well. See that right here? And another one on the bottom. After I tape that up, I can put the flex back on here. See how far the jacket goes, or I'll just cut a piece of insulation to fit it. Here's what we're gonna try this time. I'm gonna try to pull this insulation back far enough where I can clip some of the helix off just so we won't have excess helix on the inside. This is the helix, by the way, the black section right here with the wire run around it. I'm gonna pull the insulation back. I pulled it back. I'll cut like three or four rungs off of this and uh, we'll use it like that. Just take my little like that make it real easy little clippy clippy take my linesman's pliers and cut this off don't cut it with snips or you ruin your snips helix fits over the crimp of the pipe here we'll slide it up just shy of the zone damper just like that now again you use 181b actually you use whatever your municipality requires of you. They all do different things. They do follow the code, but sometimes there's local requirements. It's weird. But for this, I'm gonna use silver tape, but you have to do whatever locally that you're supposed to do. Make sure not to get a bunch of tape all over the shaft of your blade here on the bottom because you don't want it to have trouble moving because you put tape all over it. All these come from experience, guys. Someone says, this zone damper ain't working. Well, who put all this tape on the blade? And I go, I don't know. Inside, I know I did it. And on flex ducts, we'll put the Panduit straps back on. A little extra tape right here. So I feel good at night. We'll put a Panduit strap on, wherever they may be. Wrap it around. A regular Panduit strap, I think it's 36 inches, will go all the way around 10 inch, but it doesn't quite do 12 inch ducts. You have to put two together. What I do is I just use my man strength. And I know it must be good enough because I've broken a few of them. So I figured if I've broken a few of them, it must be enough strength to get the job done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up. The thing is, you don't wanna cover up this motor. We're not gonna do that. I can put a slit in this is what I sometimes do. I just put a slit in the insulation. Make sure you got it over the shaft but not, not binding the shaft or anything like that. We'll dress this up so it don't look bad either. For those of you who might be like, oh my gosh. What do you do to that poor duck work? It's been a murder. Somebody call the police. The YouTube police. Whenever you pull this up all the way to the trunk duct, if you feel like you haven't got all the insulation up there, sometimes I'll just grab a piece of insulation and stuff it underneath there just to make sure it's insulated. Usually you can tug on it and get it up there. But heck, I've done everything but duct insulation, house insulation, whatever I gotta do to put up in there. Like you take a little piece here, like, oh look. <laughs> I wanna make sure it's fully insulated. Well, do what you gotta do, that's what I say. Because what'll happen is you'll be insulating or you'll leave a spot that's not insulated and it'll start to sweat and drip on something. Might cause it, you might not, it might just drip and then evaporate which is what happens a lot of times, but you don't want to take that risk of it dripping all over something, something electrical or getting on the drywall, eventually putting a stain on the drywall. You don't want mold either. You might have a salesman come in there and sell them a system 
You don't want people, you don't want salesmen sneaking in with their, with their mold strips and their good, better, best forms swooping in on your customer. Let them know that you didn't do a good job because you didn't tell them about the deadly stachybotrys mold that's going to cause their dog to die or something. You don't want to be that guy, do you? All right, this is our first zone damper. It's a 10 inch. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two on my own off camera. You guys see how it works. And then we'll come back with the next step of the process here in just a second. One thing I've decided to do because there was a little dampness down here and a little bit of uh, humidity issues overall, I'm gonna wrap right next to the ductwork here in an extra layer of insulation, just so we don't have any damp areas. I haven't done the side I originally did. This is. Uh, one of the other zones. I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to ensure we don't have any sweating right there at the trunk because we don't want to have any issues with that down the road. All of our zone dampers are in place so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the zone panel mounted up here so we can start our wiring from the zone damper to the zone panel, tying the thermostats, get some thermostats on the wall. So I'm gonna put the panel up here, I'm gonna mark where the holes are gonna be, then I'm going to drill those out, maybe put some runners on the back to hold the wires in place because like a neat panel. So we'll do that next, and then we'll move on to the wiring process. I have the zone board tentatively mounted to my little bracket here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply go through here and drill a hole where these knockouts are so I can knock them out and then drill through to the back side of the board because that way I'll be able to make some cool channels that hides most of the wiring. All I have to do is know where they're at, basically. That's it, so we can take it off and see what we got. There we have our four holes. We have them, let's see, right here, right here, right here, and right here. So we'll drill those out, then we can put the board up there again. And after I drill these out, I'll go ahead and mount the, the bracket in the final position. I have my zone board mount right here. I'm gonna take this paddle bit, of course my trusty Ruby drill, go ahead and drill out these four holes. Then we can remount the, this board to the platform and then put the zone board on this. I decided to drill these holes out instead of trying to knock them out because I'm worried about flexing the circuit board and I'm just gonna zip these uh, holes in them real quick and I think we'll be better off this way. One of the worries I had is nothing gets underneath the board because there's, a, there's basically a bar right through there. So no fiber is gonna get underneath the board, get jammed in there and cause it to heat up or whatever might, might happen. So we should be good. What I do is I take a screw right here at the face of it. I'm gonna put my drill on it, kind of run it down through. And I can set it in the hole that was already there. So I know I'm in the right spot. Snug it up most of the way, leave it a little bit, a little bit loose. So I can come in and do the same thing on the bottom. Find that hole over here. Snug it up. All right, let me make sure the face still fits on, make sure we didn't flex it in any way but where we cause it not to fit. All right, looks like it fits pretty good. All right, so what we can do now is I can start wiring things up, bring the thermostats over here. Actually, the thermostats I'll do last because I'm not sure which thermostats I'm gonna buy yet. So I won't wire them up till I have them. But we can go ahead and take uh, the wires from the zone dampers over here and run them back over here to the panel one by one. Because I know what they're going to be. They're three wire power, open power, close, which is going to be denoted by you know, our M1246 terminals, which we can see right here on the board. There's multiple sets of these terminals for up to, looks like one, two, three different uh, damper motors. I'm gonna come along the back side of this and put some of these thermostat staples of the inside so we can run those wires up like a track. And then whenever I get done, I can tap them down a little bit farther and kind of lightly cinch them into place. Do the same thing on this side. So all the wires are neatly tucked behind the panel, which I like. 
This is an example of how I'd run the wire. So we have our zone damper over here that's for the bedrooms. This is going to be zone three. And I'll write all this stuff down here in a minute down here, zone one, two, and three. I'll write it over here on the actual damper just to make it obvious everywhere. So this is zone three, so I'm bringing it in close to the zone three terminals. It's running down the back, all the way down, all the way out, I'll drill another hole down there so it could go out the side, right over to the thermostat. And so I'm gonna run all the wires now from the damper actuator motors, one, two, and three, run them probably down and around the back so they're hidden, bring them up the back of these panels. The motors will come up on this side, thermostats on this side, Make sure everything's labeled because if a day or two goes by and you don't work on it, you don't want to forget what goes with what. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now off the camera, guys, because you've sort of seen how I'm going to do it. No need to be repetitious, and I'll get back with you guys once I'm finished. Look at the submittal sheet here. We can see we have power open, closed, common, which is M1, 4, and 6. So what I'm going to do is we have power closed, 6, power open, 4, common is M1. So we're going to know which we connect to on the other end based on those M's. And what I do typically is for common, I use green because I think of common almost as like ground in my mind. That's sort of how I picture it. And then power closed, I'll use white. Power open, I use red because I figure power open. I don't know what it is, but uh, for some reason, that's how I remember it. So pretty easy just to be nice and gentle here not too crazy on your torque because what'll happen is you'll strip it out and destroy the little terminal block. So just till it starts to bite, you should be good. You can always give it a little tuggy tuggy whenever you're done to make sure everything's working properly. Some of these things are having push terminals now, which are okay. They're not as good, I think. All right, so pretty easy. I leave a little bit of extra wire down below just in case we have to chop and redo or something. So not so much that it looks ugly, but enough that it's practical. We'll say that. One more close look at our terminals. So we have common power open, power close. Some dampers only have two terminals. If it's just a power close or power open damper, the good thing about power open close is they're more reliable and they use less power than one that uses a spring because when you're working against a spring, it causes motor to use a lot more power to do that job because it's working against that force. So it's good to have power open, power close in my opinion, and they tend to last a lot longer. You can also see this little black button right here. We press it down, it'll release so we can move the shaft. Shaft is right here. You can actually see there's marks on it to show the shaft is open. So if we hit this little button right here, we can close it and we can move it around. We can do whatever we want with the power off. We can also set the stops up here. Let's take a closer look at that. There are stops on either end of the entire motion of the shaft here. So we can actually unscrew these and move them so it won't open or close all the way if we so desire. The reason why we may not want it to open or close all the way, typically for me, the most common reason is you wanna bleed through a little bit of air, especially if you have a system that is improperly done where you have an excess airflow when some of the zones are shut down, you can bleed through a little bit of air, maybe even negate a cooling call or a heating call by bleeding through that little bit of air. Um, I don't know, sometimes I just think it's best practice just to leave it a little bit open all the time in each zone. That way, as long as each zone is going to be calling for the same cycle. So if you're in a residential house and you're all gonna be calling for cooling all the time, you're all gonna be calling for heating all the time, then a little bit of bleed through might help alleviate some of those cooling calls and the on and off of the compressor. But if you have competing calls, heating, cooling, then that is uh, obviously not advisable because you'll have the other cycle bleeding through. Most of the wires are run to the zone panel now. We have our three damper wires on this side. What I've done is I put little hash marks based on which number damper they are. So we have one, two, and three. Same thing with the thermostats on this side. I have thermostat two, thermostat three. Thermostat one is still connected to the air handler itself, so I'm leaving that connected. I can wire all these now, but I might as well wait till I have the other wires in there and do it all at one fell swoop. I have this piece here, which is our supply air sensor, which will be mounted in the center of the air handler. Uh, you don't mount it outside the air handler because you don't want it to take into account the heat strips. Uh, on some of these machines, you can control the heat strips with the supply air sensor, meaning if your supply air temperature gets low enough, 
it'll bring on the heat strips, which is very useful because if you're producing enough heat with a heat pump system, you don't need to bring the heat strips on anyway. So a lot of thermostats will automatically bring it on. So what I'll do is we'll come over into this area right around here. We'll open up the door of the air handler so we can drill a hole down, put the supply air sensor in, and then we can wire it back to the panel using our 18-8 wire, just using two conductors. Okay, the system is running, so I'm gonna be very sneaky and look in here. I'm looking to put a hole right here and put this sensor. So we're gonna see if that's gonna work. And it looks like right here is fine. The blower's here. We have several inches of space, so. Should be fine. Right here is good. About two inches in from the middle, two inches in from the side. Typically I run a quarter inch sheet metal screw down there, but I don't have my bit up here. So I'm gonna try to hit it with just a step bit. And we're gonna come in a couple inches, just like I said. There we go. That ought to be good right there, I think. Yep. Go ahead and what I do, make sure goes through the insulation. We can take a peek on the inside again too, just to make sure everything's all right. Take the top off of here, screwdriver. All right, see some wire nuts fell out of here. Make sure I'm clear, fits right down in there. That's gonna get our supply temperature. Have a little lead coming out of there, a lead of a couple conductors. We'll put our wire on that lead. And what it does, it comes out this hole right here in the side. And there's a little, little grommet right here that comes with it. So let's put our screws in there first, anchor it into place, which uh, it would be nice if I actually had the, the bit up here. I guess I'll go get that. And then we'll anchor these screws into place right here. And there is, on the inside, it should be noted, it does show you airflow direction. So you'll want to pay attention to that when you're putting this in here. There's a specific direction for airflow. Put it halfway down, put the other one in. Making sure we got the airflow direction. Snug it up. There's a look at the inside. You can see the airflow arrow is pointing this way toward the supply. And don't let me forget, every EWC zone panel comes with a screwdriver, which is awesome. It really is awesome, guys, because these are always getting lost. And these are good screwdrivers, too. So it's a double happy moment. Put our little grommet in there. Then we have our top we can put on. Then we have a couple smaller screws over here to put on that top. That'll dress that up. And then we can uh, wire this off and probably wrap around here with the other thermostat wires and kind of put them all together in one spot. I'm gonna start the process of wiring all the things that I can wire in the panel. I have the wire run over tentatively from the supply air sensor. I know I may be adjusting the wiring over here at the air handler, so I haven't tied it together except to the actual wire from the outdoor unit because that should remain the same. So what I'm doing here, get some light over here, is I have the supply air sensor wired up. It's not polarized, so you can wire it either way. It's not a fixed, like you have to have red or positive in one side and negative on the other side. You don't have to do that. Uh, for the dampers, we're just going to follow the diagram for the, I think it was M1, 2, 4, and 6, which ones are applicable. We're going to wire those up here. I'm going to go ahead and do all of that, and then I'll catch up with you guys afterwards. with green for is power open so we're going to go with our red because that's what I use for power open you can use whatever you want I just like to keep it straight and uniform and to me red I think of open or positive I, I don't know why I make that that connection I always straighten them up after I'm done give them a slight tug to make sure they don't pop right out like I did something wrong or miss a terminal sometimes there's little gaps underneath these terminals and you could accidentally get the wire into those so just give it a double check there real quick and our m6 it's gonna be our power close which i use for white 
And that is our first damper all wired up from panel to damper. I'll do the same thing with the other two. So I've got my three damper wires wired up. I'm leaving these thermostats off till I figure out what thermostats I'm going to get. I'm going to go to the store and get something uh, not spectacular by any means, just regular old thermostats. Um, the zone board is kind of the brains of the operation, so I don't need super stats unless I want Wi-Fi or something, and honestly, I don't really care. So I'm going to get a couple stats to go along with the other stat that's already up. Go ahead and mount those probably later today, hopefully when I pick those up, maybe tomorrow morning. And then I can wire the rest of this up and uh, maybe even fire it off. And then after we fire it off, test it a little bit, we can, ex we can add that SBD2 as well and check it out. We're going to go through each one of these dip switches on the center of the zone board. And we're going to start with the first one, which is a selection of HP or other. I'm just going to read it out. It says, choose the type of HVAC system you want to control. Select HP if your system is any type of heat pump. Select other if your system is a standard gas or oil furnace. Other setting also applies to straight electric furnaces or hydronic hot water coils. So we're heat pump, so we're going to switch that over to heat pump. There we go. So the first one we have switched over to heat pump. The second one is DF or CONV. It says choose the type of heat pump you want to control. Select DF, restricted mode, if you wish to lock out the compressor during auxiliary heat operation. Typically set for dual fuel operation. Select CONV, which is conventional, if you wish to have the compressor run during auxiliary heat operations. Typically set for electric backup, which is what we have. We have electric strip heat, so we're going to be set on conventional, which is where we're already at. So the third one here, we have HC or HP for our thermostats. It says select HC if you want to use regular heat and cool thermostats on your job. So you can use heat or cool thermostats even if you have a heat pump because the thermostats are just going to tell the zone board whether you're running in heating or cooling and the zone board is the brain. If you want to use heat pump thermostats on your job, you can select HP. And it also says, remember, you can use standard heat cool thermostats on a heat pump operation. So there's an important note as well. The BM Plus 3000 zone control system allows heat pump thermostats to be connected to all zones, provides a level of versatility to your zoning system that gives the homeowner comfort control over the system instead of waiting for the adjustable timer to energize the second stage of heat. So what we're going to do is I'm giving everything to the actual board here. I want the board to decide stuff based on what I set up. So we're just going to leave it at heat cool thermostats. That's what I purchased for it, my bargain stats from uh, Lowe's and Walmart. So that's what we're going to use. So we already set on heat cool, as you can see, dip switch three, we're slid to the left. So we go to dip switch four, it says O or B, that's our reversing valve. Uh, o is energized in cooling and B is energized in heating. And as for staging, we have either the outdoor air sensor that controls the staging or a timer. We're gonna control the staging with a timer because as of right now, we don't have the outdoor air sensor. So let me slide that over. That is dip switch number, let's see, five. I think we're already slid there, yes. So we're gonna continue going down to the 50% rule, off or on. Okay, I'm gonna read what this says. You select off if you do not want to inhibit Y2 or auxiliary heat based on total number of zones calling. So basically all this means is if you have less than 50% of the zones calling, it won't let you go into that higher stage. Like if I had one zone calling since I have three, it wouldn't let me go into second stage of cooling or heating, which is what I want. So I want the 50% rule on. I want the staging to only occur, or stage up only occur, if we have more than one zone calling. So I'm going to turn that to on. And we're gonna go now to supply air sensor. Select off if you do not wanna use supply air sensor included with the BM Plus, select on if you do. I am gonna use a supply air sensor. So I am turning it to on. And finally, we have gas or hydronic fan. Select gas if your HVAC system is a gas or oil forced air furnace. Select hydronic if your HVAC system has a hot water coil or straight electric heat with no indoor blower support. When you select heat pump on dip switch number one, the indoor fan mode is automatically set for you. There is no need to move this switch. So basically we're saying like a gas furnace fires the fan on its own through its control board or inter integrated furnace control. And what we're saying on this one is the actual G signal comes from the thermostat or the board instead of coming from the equipment itself. And that's all of our switches, guys. So I'm going to check these back real quick, and then we're going to go on to the timers. So now we're looking at our first two timers, which is the staging timer slash outdoor air sensor. And the second one 
is low temp limit. Now, as far as a low temp limit, my experience in zoning is about as low as that goes is around 40 degrees. I'm gonna leave it at 43 because the lower the temperature in this thing, the more issue we're gonna have with condensation and we already have an issue with condensation so I'm gonna leave it at 43 plus since this is a variable speed machine we shouldn't have the same issues with low temp that we would have with a single stage with multiple zones so we're gonna try it there live and learn we'll see what happens to the left of that one the staging timer is set to 21 minutes with 21 minutes being a significant amount of time I'm thinking about making that a pretty long period of time because I want it to dehumidify so the longer we run in first stage the better job we're gonna do with that now the caveat is that we may not cool the house well enough that's gonna be the main issue so I'm gonna try 21 let me go ahead and try 21 we'll see that for a few days and we'll adjust it if we need to so the first two we're really not going to mess with all that much now we have our high temp limit it goes from 110 to 170 for a heat pump, we're monitoring how warm the air off the coil is because the sensor is located in between the two sections of the air handler, so it doesn't monitor temperature of the heat strips. So if the coil reaches X temperature, which right now looks like it's at around 138, it's going to turn the machine off. Now, I think 138 is a pretty high number, so I'm actually going to dial it down to 130. You guys can give me some feedback on that, so let me go ahead and do that. We'll leave it right there, which is right just below 130. In my experience it's been in the 120s mid 120s with this setting so we'll see I'll take uh, an approach in between here and we'll see how it works I think uh, it should I think it's gonna work well at that temperature but we'll allow it to run and see finally we have the second stage heat differential now this sets the second stage heat supply air temperature at which the heating is cycled off and the fan continues to run allowing the heat exchanger to cool down so if you get to X amount higher than the first stage setting, it's gonna shut the machine down and allow the fan to run like an over limit. Now for where we have the sensor positioned, now this would allow the sensor to be positioned in the actual supply duct because then it would monitor the heat strips and maybe we'll end up doing that. So for us, that's really kind of a non-issue right here. I might actually turn it down a little bit because we shouldn't have much of a jump. 130, if heat pump air is coming out at 150 or something like that, then we have some kind of magic heat pump. Or maybe them hyperheats do that. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to turn this down to actually. Let's go all the way down to 12. Because think about that. We have a limit of 130, 142. That's awful hot. Again, you guys can let me know what you think of that. You know how it's set up. It's set up in the middle of the air handler, not in the supply plenum. So that looks like everything we need to set up as far as these timers. Now let's move on and see if there's anything else we can set before we get the power shut off. You can see that there's an EM or norm, that's actually norm. So what happens here, if you don't have emergency heat setting coming from the thermostat, which we don't actually, you can just set it to emergency heat here manually and it will put the system in emergency heat. So instead of having a switch on the thermostat, it's up here at the actual board itself. Now that's somewhat of a slight inconvenience if you don't have it on your thermostat, but it is nice that there's a provision on the board to do that. I will probably end up getting some kind of nicer thermostat after uh, this runs for a while. But for now, this will be the way that I can switch it to emergency heat if I need to this winter. What I'm gonna do now before I shut the power off to the unit is there's a connection over here on this side of the board that goes to the equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and get a wire on that, dangle it around and cut it off so it's all ready. So there's the least amount of work that has to take place while the unit shut off because we do have people in the house. It's gonna be a hot day. It's gonna be like 85 degrees, which is not as hot, so that's nice. So I just wanna minimize how much discomfort the people downstairs have while the system is offline. I don't know if everybody does it like this, but I've always uh, stripped using a box cutter. Just been real gentle with it. Uh, it's a good way to cut your wires if you're not too experienced with that. That's, that's how I've always done it. I don't, I don't know why. It's probably not the best way to do it, but you know, you start etching it out, and then when you get to the end, put a little bit more pressure on it. There's, there's a wires inside here, or there's this thread inside here. If you guys can see that, there's this little thread deal right here. You pull down on it, and it'll uh, kind of cut the sheath for you. But 
I've never actually done that. I've always done things the hard way, people. That's always how I've been. So for going to the equipment, you know, we're having multiple staging. What do we need to be able to tell this machine? Well, we need to be able to tell the machine that the fan's running. There's our green wire. We need to have a first stage of cooling, and I'm going to use black for second stage of cooling. So we need those things. We need to tell them the reverse and valves running. There we go. And we have power, red, and we have common right here. And then we have W1 right here. So that should be all the wires we need. I can take a look at the block here and make sure that uh, that's the case. So let's go ahead over to the block and then I can strip these wires. So you can see I have G, Y2, Y1, O, W1, W2, RH, and RC. So we're going to wire up through there and then I'll show you guys how I wired it. So you can see this terminal block is labeled system. It's going to the air handler to meet the air handler wiring and the outdoor unit wiring. You can see from top to bottom, green is G, very common. Y1 and Y2 is yellow and black respectively. We have O, which is our reversing valve energized and cooling, is orange. We have W2 for our strip heat. We have RH and RC there. We've connected to RH, but they are connected. If you can see down here below, that little resistor right there, there's an RH RC link right here that you can cut if you need to, like if you have an oil furnace with air conditioning. But for us, we don't need to cut that because we only need one R terminal anyway, because there's uh, two separate transformers on some of the other systems like oil. And then at the very bottom, we have our common. Even though our thermostats don't have a common, they use batteries, we do have to have a common going from the board to the actual air handler. What I've done is I already located the thermostat wire from zone one that runs the system now. And I've taken the liberty of stripping all the wires from my, or stripping all the conductors from my wire from the zone panel. So I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna put the last thermostat on the wall and replace the Bosch stat. And then I can come up here and finish this wiring and fire things up. So just making sure I have all the preparation done before I go downstairs because just like I said, least amount of inconvenience for people involved. They might as well keep the thing on as much as possible. I also ran it down a little bit so it stays cooler in the house because we have the elderly and the wifely down there right now. the air handler opened up this is our main this this actually broke the day I installed the system it's just a breaker not a necessary breaker because we have a disconnect so right now it's just a hub for wiring basically um, I could come in here and put a split bolt or a union in here for the wiring but the way I see it split bolts essentially what I have in place so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a transformer and probably take from where these wires terminate like there's one here at a sequencer up here See, there's a black wire here that runs down to L1, we'll call it. And I can split that right there, and I could take one off the other side up here at the top. So this would be L2. So I have some options here for getting some power to a transformer, which I guess I will mount right up here if I can. So I'm going to try to get all that stuff done, guys, and I'll show you once I'm finished. Looking at our transformer, it's a Beacon transformer, which means I bought it at United, I guess. And we see primary side, which is our high voltage side, we have common as white. And then for 240, which is what we are, we have orange. So we're going to be using white and orange because there's multiple options. If you're doing a furnace that's 120 volts, there's a black you would use. So basically, on this side of the transformer, you pair up white with one of the other wires here based on what your voltage is. Since we're 240, it's white and orange. Be careful because not all transformers have the same color coding, so don't get in that habit because you might get mistaken one time. I think black is common on some of them, 
So, and on the 24 volt side, which is our secondary side, we just have the two wires and I'll have a fuse right there just uh, to protect the transformer from blowing in case there's a short. Another transformer tech tip here is your, if you're putting a transformer in here and it's hard to reach inside here to mount it, uh, come in from the other side over here, drill you some holes, and then it'll make it a little bit easier because you won't have to drill those holes. Even if you have to screw in from this side, it'll be a little bit easier overall because you already have the holes drilled. Let's give that a shot and see how that works. All right, looking here at the transformer, we have the transformer mounted here, a screw coming from the inside of the cabinet out to kind of hold it in place because it turned out to be a pain in the buttocks. So white and orange. These two wires are 240 volts to the primary side of the transformer. They meet up with the wiring that goes from the terminal block to the blower. So that's all wire nutted together. You see the orange wire nuts here. So that's where the 240 volts come from. And on the flip side, we have our 24 volt hot here or designated hot here with a fuse in there. This will be dressed up once we're done, guys. You should uh, wrap these and protect these bare connections so it doesn't short out. Right here, we have the R and C terminals for the transformer coming in. You can see it says 24 volts. It also says it's protected as well. So that's our 24 volts is going to help feed those dampers that are right above it. Although these dampers shouldn't draw much energy, I think probably 3VA a P somewhere in there. So that's a total of just under 10 VA. So a 40 VA transformer can definitely handle that plus a little bit more. Older dampers that are spring close or spring open might run as much as 12 VA. I have finished wiring up down here, had a float switch wired back in. A transformer, a fuse back there. Make sure I get that all fixed up. Everything should be wired up properly. We have supply air sensor, thermostat one, two, and three, or three, two, and one, should I say. Output to the equipment, 24 volt transformer, our three dampers. Check and make sure all of our stuff is squared away. We'll turn them on one by one. So I think we're squared away. I'm gonna button the air handler back up temporarily. We'll do a test run. And let's just let's see if we blow anything up, I guess. All right, it shows our zone one is active and the fan is on, which is true. We just turned the fan on and we have a status light that blinks under normal operation if the microprocessor is working. So I'm gonna turn the fan on in zone two and zone three to see if both these dampers open up. This is zone three. zone two and as we can see zone one the light is green because that damper is open and you can see the how open it is from the orientation of the blade right here so you can see that should be the same on this one and it is so let me show those other fans on we'll make sure they come on as well as you can see, zone two shows as on, zone three shows as on, and looking down at the zone panel, you can see that all the zone lights are on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn zone one into air conditioning, and the other two zones should close, and we should see that Y1 illuminate. As you can see, the zone two is closed, zone three is now closed, and zone one is open. We should be running in stage one. As you see, the Y1 light is illuminated. So we have Y1, zone one, and fan illuminated to let everyone know what's going on. So if this was the only damper that would call, it would stay in Y1 permanently because we have a 50% rule on this board. But if one more zone calls after X amount of time, which I think it was 21 minutes, we will go into stage two. But I'm hoping we stay in stage one almost all the time as the zones alternate and some need air conditioning and others don't need it at all hardly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna verify that the other two zones are, how they're labeled. I'm gonna turn each stat on and take a look. I won't bring you guys along for that. And then after that, we'll fire them all up. So now we have all three zones operating. All three dampers are open. 
we have all the indicators on the board lit up for zones one, two, and three and fan, as well as Y1. I have a timer on my phone, which is about 15 minutes away from terminating, which should have us going into stage number two. So if we haven't reached stage two by then, there must be some sort of error. So hopefully we'll be fine with that. But I'm gonna let it roll. I turned all the thermostats down to 68. It was like 73 in the house. So it should run for the whole 15 minutes, especially when we're on zone one since, uh, or stage one, since stage one is just a you know, like 300 CFM. It's something really, really low. So we can verify that as well. But we have another experiment coming up with the CFM. So everything seems to be working according to plan so far, but we'll check back at the end of that timer and we'll make sure that uh, it stages up. As you guys can see, we have our Y2 illuminated. My timer had one minute left on it, so I guessed close. So it came on just as directed. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna set up everything in the house where we normally like it so we can have our nice zone system and enjoy it. And our next step will be installing the SVD2. We'll do that in the next video. And we'll set that up and kind of go into the features about that. But for right now, I'm going to enjoy my, my new zone system. 